Hi, this is Rob Packard from Medical Device Academy. This video is a recording of what can be found in our Production Process Control Procedure, SYS-012. This video here is a video uh, that's currently on our homepage. We're gonna be replacing this with the video I'm recording now. And in order to purchase the procedure, you go down here and click on Add to Cart. And you, if you don't wanna purchase it through PayPal, you can minimize here. But um, for PayPal, you can click down here and you can pay with any number of credit, card, credit cards in addition to your PayPal account. In the procedure, we um, cover all the requirements of Section 751 in the ISO standard, uh, ISO 1345 2016, numbers A through F. We also include the requirements for traceability, for identification traceability. Um, our identification traceability procedure is SYS-032. In addition, we include requirements for um, device master records or DMRs. We also include uh, a checklist for release of each DHR or device history record that you have for each batch or lot or serial number that you produce. We also have reference to UDI requirements. And we even include some basic things that people should be including in their uh, production process control, such as process validation, um, traceability to equipment, traceability to calibration devices or calibrated devices, and uh, line clearance activities. So those are some of the things that are covered in this procedure. But I'm actually gonna show you uh, behind the scenes and actually show you the procedure itself. Uh, I'll first show you the email. So when you purchase it, you receive an automated email and it'll say these two, these two documents are attached and it also gives you the related documents to these two procedures. So there are five different procedures that are related to them and you can purchase any of those by clicking on this page and going to the bottom of the page and purchasing them individually. But here's the um, DHR release checklist and here's the production process control procedure. And I have both of those already opened up so I'll go through the checklist first. And you would modify this for your own production uh, lots. And each product might be a little bit different. Uh, the items in green are things that I would expect you to change or delete. Things in black are probably things that will stay the way they are and would not change. Um, but you would create one of these for each of your products or have a generic one for all your products. But um, for these three right here, they're related to a gamma sterilization process. So if you don't have gamma sterilization, you're going to either change or delete this. And you could list each of the th requirements for all sterilization processes and write NA next to them. But I think the, the better way to do it is to have one for each product and have it speci specific to what should be in there. So the person that is filling out the checklist doesn't have to go look things up they can go right off the checklist and say yes or no, rather than not applicable. The only thing that's gonna be not applicable is up here where you have NA if it's actually incorporated into the batch record or you don't have any lot materials. Um, at the bottom we have a signature and the name and title of the person. So you actually have to have a signature releasing your product. That is one of the requirements in the FDA QSR. You also want to identify how much product is released. So you might produce some of the product today, let's say a thousand units, but only release a hundred of them at this time because they might be in different sterilization lots. So if that's the case, or some might be rejected, you, so you would indicate how many are actually being released, the product name, the date, the manufacturer. So those are the things that are covered in this uh, form. In addition to that, we have the actual production process control procedure. This is our second draft. You delete this D2. That's just how we keep track of which draft it is. So we give you the most current one. Uh, we archive the old one so we can uh, give you an older version if you wanted it. Um, and then when you purchase this procedure, you would replace our logo with your logo. If you're purchasing our total quality system, then we would do that for you as part of that service. Um, and then the company name gets replaced with your company name. Here it shows what the processes are that are inputs to it and the processes that are output in the records. It tells you what we've changed in the procedure over time, uh, from in this case from draft one to draft two. So we've added requirements for uh, the new EU regulation for the MDR. 
We've included um, description of the DHR contents, traceability of equipment and calibrated devices, approval of the DHR checklist for release of product, references to those other procedures, and I added a requirement for training online clearance, and it's compliant with ISO 1345-2016. And when you release the procedures, you're gonna indicate the date you release it, the document change notice or DCN that you're releasing it on. This is just a year plus a sequential number, and you can put your name here instead as the author, just like you would up here. And then as you go through the procedure, you're gonna notice section where we listed a bunch of DMRs. Your DMRs can have any numbering scheme you want, and they could be technical files instead of DMRs, and some could be DMRs and some could be technical files. But the point is the details of each product and how to build it aren't going to be in this one procedure. It makes it too burdensome and too detailed, and you presumably are gonna have more than one product in the future, so it would become extremely hard to maintain. So instead, we have just a list of your different technical files and DMRs, and it makes it a quick, easy reference place for internal and external auditors to find, hey, here's all the DMRs and technical files. And then if you go down a little bit further here, um, this is where I talked about line clearance requirement being added, but throughout here we've got different requirements in general, but all the details of the manufacturing process are gonna be in your DMR, and you're gonna list each of your work instructions and each of your inspection criteria. We also have a risk-based approach. We put this in all our procedures. We explain what the potential hazards are and how to control them. The one I added, line clearance, that's to prevent mix-ups. And then down below here, we have records. So you have a device history record is going to be one of your records from any manufacturing pro production process control procedure. And we talk about paper records and electronic records. And we talk about describing what should be in those records. We also include the requirement that non-conforming material records, copies of them should be in the DHR and you should have the DHR checklist uh, for release of it also included. So that's what's included in our procedure. Um, rather, than, um, rather than have you, um, me try to include every single question that you could possibly ask about this process or procedure in this video, instead, when you purchase our total quality system, you're gonna actually have the opportunity to ask questions about each of these procedures. So if you have questions about how do I revise this procedure, that's something we cover. Each week you'd have a half hour session with us and we would do a Zoom session like this is, we can record them like this session is, and then you would actually have it in your archives. So this training session that we walk through and ask questions about the procedure, and maybe you make modifications, but you'll understand the rationale for those changes. So that's really helpful when you're training people later on. So that covers all the details of what you will get when you purchase SYS012. If you have any other questions, what you can also do is you can go to our Contact Us page, and you can go down here and select on a 15 or a 30 minute meeting and schedule that meeting on my Calendly app to uh, ask any further questions you might have. You can also contact me by email, phone, or Skype. Thank you very much and hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.